What's up guys, Ryan here at Ziggy Treadits, and inside of this Lightroom tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take this portrait from here to here inside of Lightroom and a little bit of Photoshop right at the end. So if you want to edit along, you can grab the free raw file at signatureedits.com slash free dash raw dash photos. Otherwise, I'll see you on the other side of this intro and we'll get right into it. All right, so if you want to edit along, make sure you head to signatureedits.com slash free dash raw dash photos. You can grab this raw file and edit along with me. Share your edits at Signature Edits Co. so I can check them out. So um, what's going on in this photo? Well, it was taken with a 28 mil lens, shot up at Banff, well, in Banff National Park at Lake Louise up at the tea house. There's a hike you can do that overlooks the lake. It's pretty cool. However, there's a few things we're going to have to fix inside of this photo, namely the fact that since it's taken on a 28 millimeter, we've got some distortion happening with this lens. You can see the windows just aren't quite straight. We're going to have to fix that. Uh, we've also got obviously very high dynamic range image, so we've got a very blown out window. I'm not super concerned about that because I'm going to try and add some light rays later on, um, but we're going to try and recover that a little bit and just raise the shadows up. So to get started, I am going to apply a preset to this image just to like get a little bit of a vibe going on and save a few steps because most of this edit is not the actual preset itself. If you want to know what the preset is doing, for the most part, it's just warming up the image. It's doing a little bit in the luminance section of the reds and the yellows and the purples and the magentas. It's taking the saturation down in the yellows, the greens, the aquas, and it's making the yellows and the greens warmer. So we're basically just affecting the tones to make it a little bit more warm, a little bit more vintagey, okay? And then we're adding a little bit of a fade in the blacks and in the whites, okay? So that is more or less what's going on with this preset, but that's not the point of this image and the point of this edit. The point of this edit is to show you all of the little things that go into making it a great photo. So let's reapply that preset just to get our basic vibe going on and we'll raise up the exposure, lower down the highlights, lower the shadows. I should also say if you want to grab a free demo preset from this pack, this was taken from the Signature Edits Natural Collection and you can grab a link in the description below. I'm going to cool down the white balance. I'm basically just adjusting to make my skin tones look sort of natural. So we're going to keep going because obviously it's very warm in this log cabin. Now of course what happens when I do that? Well the outside light is very very blue by comparison so I'm going to have to warm that up. So we're going to go down to our HSL. And this is why I say the preset isn't like the main thing, because I'm still going to have to tweak things. The preset is just a starting point to save a little bit of time. So here I'm going to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to just play with the blues, see if maybe changing the hue will help me out a little bit. Not too much. Mainly, I'm going to take the saturation down, because there's not really any blue I want to preserve in the image. Like, nothing in here needs to be blue. So I can get rid of that. I'm going to add some warmth back into the window later on anyways, so that shouldn't be a big deal. Something like that. Cool. While we're at it, we can go ahead and just select these windows. I've hit K on my keyboard. That's going to allow me to just pull up an adjustment brush here. And I'm going to brush anywhere that has really blue light or is now desaturated. Basically just the highlights of the image. I'm going to add some warmth. Like so. And maybe pull back the magenta a little bit. So here's before that and after. Come on, come on. There we go. <laughs> so before, come on. Before and after. So you can see it's making a difference. I might want to hit, hit O on my keyboard. That will show me the adjustment brush and I can just make sure that I'm not brushing areas I don't need to. So I'll erase those by holding the Alt key on my keyboard. Make sure your flow is all the way up. So I can erase it off of there. Good. And if you ever want to brush in a straight line, here's a little trick for you. Click once, then hold Shift and click wherever you want that line to go to and Lightroom will actually make a perfectly straight line. So you can use this sometimes if you want to add, say, a bit of a light ray or something. You don't want to head into Photoshop, and that's a little trick. Okay, so I think for the sake of what we're doing here, that's probably close enough. Great. Now, up here at the very top, it still looks a little bluish, so I'm going to add one more layer by hitting K on my keyboard again and just brushing right up there and just warm that up. 
maybe bring the contrast down a little bit. And as I'm doing this, I'm also thinking about, okay, what's my like end, end vision for this? And the vision is to have some light rays coming through. It's a beautiful morning, right? So I don't need to worry as much about getting this perfect because I'm going to cover it up with light rays later. So that's kind of the goal here. All right, next, I'm going to maybe hit M on my keyboard. That's going to make a nice graduated filter, and I can drag that over from the side. I'm going to try and brighten up the shadows here. And I'm going to do that by actually raising the whites and the highlights rather than just focusing on trying to raise the shadows up. Because while that will work, it'll look a little bit less natural than if I just try and brighten the parts of the image that are already meant to be bright. So I'll do that, maybe add a little bit of exposure, just play around. Okay, I'm going to dial it back so that it's just a little bit that's going on because I don't like what effect it's having at the very top. See how it's kind of adding some weird blur? So instead, I'm going to hit K on my keyboard, and I'm just going to brush in the area I want to add some brightness to. Right in there. Highlights up. Whites up. Maybe a little bit of texture. Maybe even some dehaze, see what happens and then dial everything back. So we'll take that amount slider back to say there. So here's before that and here's after that. Just brighten myself up, brighten the background just a little. And then this cool little painting, I wanna bring that out. So I'm going to brush on top of it by hitting K on my keyboard again. A lot of K going on. Raise the exposure up, maybe a little dehaze. Add some saturation, highlights, whites. I'm just doing really quick edits and then I'm gonna dial it back. So it's okay that it's not perfect the first time. It's also looking kind of cold, so I will warm it up a little bit. Okay. Now I might actually take the clarity down on it, maybe even the texture, because it is in the background. I don't want it feeling overly sharp, and the dehaze is going to kind of add a little bit of that, so find a balance. Cool, and just out of curiosity, I'm gonna take that brush put it on myself and that doesn't work, but it is giving me an idea here. If I trace myself, just this line right here where the chair is, I don't want it to be completely black and clipped. So I'm gonna take the contrast all the way down, try and take the whites up, see what happens. Maybe the highlights, there we go. Cause I still wanna see the silhouette of like, okay, where do I end and the wall begins? And then I'm gonna erase it just a little bit in here cause that effect's too strong. Good. Holding Alt, easiest way to toggle between your eraser and your brush. So I'm still brushing, trying to get the right amount of this effect. And then I'm also going to brush a little bit on my hair here. A little trick for you. Literally, if you hold Alt, you can reset your brush. That's not the trick. The trick is somebody's hair, if it's patchy, doesn't look you know consistent enough, just literally brush on it raise up the contrast for guys especially that'll like fill in hair and stuff like that now I could also try that on my beard but that might take it too far I don't know mm, that's yeah I think we'll fill in that patch now I have the most wicked beard of all and I'll erase just a little bit so it's slightly more transparent okay so we've gone from here to here which is not too shabby. The next thing I'm gonna work on is just fixing the overall perspective of the photo because it was taken at an angle with a wide angle lens. Things are kind of skewed. So we're gonna try and straighten out those lines. So to do that, we're gonna go down to transform, hit the guided and find a couple of lines that should be perfectly straight up and down. So in this case, the middle of the window and the edge of the window. Now I might need to do this a couple times because sometimes your line isn't quite right and Lightroom takes it too far. That looks not too bad, but maybe a little bit too far. So we can actually adjust this line later, say like that, and see that we've taken it even further. Well, that might be okay. Then what you want to do is make sure you select Constrain Crop so that Lightroom will go in there and say, okay, all that white that we've now created, we're going to get rid of that. Then I'm hitting R on my keyboard because I want to move this so that I can see the top of the window. So I'm gonna go like that. Here's before and here's after. So it definitely feels a lot straighter. I've probably taken it a little bit too far. So again, we're gonna go in here with the guided. We can maybe just play around like 
this slightly. Then I've lost the top of that window, so I don't know. That might not be worth it. I might dial it back a little because I just want to make sure I can see the top. Okay, so here's before and here's after. Pretty massive difference there. All right, so I'm feeling pretty good about the image as it is inside of Lightroom. There are different things, of course, a person could do. I could maybe brighten up my arm just a little bit. It's looking kind of warm and a little bit too saturated and too contrasty. So I'll go ahead and brush on my arm. Hit O to see my brush. I can take my temperature down just a little. And I can maybe do the same on my face, but with a separate brush. So same idea. but I want to have separate control over how much I'm adding or taking away. So I'm just going to have it separate from the arm. You can see the skin feels a lot more natural as I cool it down. I'm going to go back to my arm, add a little bit of highlight because I want it to be not way, way darker than my face. It still should be because your eyes know like this is in shadow. It should be darker. So if I took it too far, it would feel unnatural but I can take it a little bit just to even it out because your eyes have better dynamic range than a camera. And so by brightening this up, this is actually closer to what your eye would have seen anyways, other than the fact that now my face is looking a little, little too bright, I think. So let's try and track down that adjustment layer. So we could maybe lower the shadows a little bit or just bring that contrast back up. zoom out. Honestly, it can be really helpful to look at your image like phone size because sometimes you see things from a greater perspective that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. So for instance, there's some weird blur going on at the edge of this window. I might want to do something about that. Overall though, that's not too bad. Things look pretty good. This table also is looking a little bit too blue. So I am going to brush particularly on these shadow areas like that. Hit O so I can see my mask. Good, hit O again. Yeah. You just gotta make sure you get a nice clean mask so it shows up okay. Erase it off my hand so it's not affecting that. Okay, how's that looking? Not bad. And then this one section on my arm, there's some like halation lens flare going on, something like that. So I'll hit K. And it's just looking a little greenish blue on that one spot. I'm not really worried about the fact that it's flaring because I'm gonna try to add some sort of lens flare and light rays anyways, but I'm going to warm it up a little bit, add some magenta and just try and even out the tone just a little bit. Okay. So that's before. Wait for it. And after. So all really subtle changes. I'm not doing anything massive to this image, but little by little, it makes a pretty big difference. So now I've got it where I like it inside of Lightroom. The last thing that I want to do is add a couple of light rays inside of Photoshop. And I could try and do this in Lightroom. The way that you would do it is you would hit K on your keyboard. You would make a pretend sun flare. So take the contrast down, highlights up, whites up, texture, clarity, and dehaze down, exposure way up, and the temperature way up. Then you have this little brush that looks like this. Okay. Now, theoretically, what you can do is just find where the light rays would have been if my beautiful, beautiful computer wants to cooperate. So for instance, let's say the light's coming in from this top corner, then hold shift, go to where that light ray should wind up and also make your brush a little bigger. So we'll make this kind of staggered trail holding shift, let go of it. It'll make this nice little light ray. So let me just show you the light, the Lightroom version, something like that. And at this point, my computer is really struggling, so just bear with me. I'm going to zoom out a little because I have to click off screen for where the light ray would have wound up. And the more of these you do, the more accurate it's going to look because you want to come from 
light disperses like this. It doesn't disperse in a straight way. So you just need to try and recreate what the light would have looked like, right? So just do this over and over again. And I know this looks ridiculous. We're going to dial it back in a second here. But this is just so we can really easily see where it's going. Okay, something like that. And then we can take this amount slider, slide it way back. And just play around. So maybe a little bit more magenta. Maybe a little bit less dehaze. A little more saturation. Maybe take it towards red. And take the amount slider up just a little bit. So that's the Lightroom version of adding some light rays. So here's before and here's after. It's not really distinct, but it is adding a little something, something. So you can do that if you don't have access to Photoshop or you just can't be bothered. It's definitely a way of getting a cool effect. I am going to delete all of these masks. And to do that, the easiest way is going to be to go down here to my history. And we're just going to go all the way down here probably to add brush. Okay, delete brush. Perfect. All right, so we're going to head into Photoshop. I'm going to darken this image down just a little bit. And the first thing we have to do is make a Photoshop brush. So I'm going to hit Photoshop, new file. I'm going to make it 5,000 by 5,000. Is that a perfect number? I don't know. It's just a number that I selected. It doesn't really matter. You can make it whatever size you want. Go somewhere around there. Then we're going to select this marquee tool and make a nice little circle about a third of the entire kind of distance of the square you've got. Hit this little icon at the bottom right to create a new layer. And now we've got our selection here. We're going to go up to Select, Modify, Feather, and do something in between 100 and 200. That's just going to take it from being a perfectly hard line to just feathering it out so that that selection is just slowly the opacity is being expanded so that it's not as harsh. Then we're going to hit OK. And from here, this is the kind of fun, interesting part. You're going to go up into Filter. Render clouds. And you get this beautiful, beautiful, realistic looking cloud. But we're not done. There's more. From here, you can go up to filter, blur, go for radial blur, set it to 100, set the blur method to zoom, and then you're just going to move it around to wherever your light is going to be angled. So in our image, if we hop back over, you can see that the light rays are kind of coming towards us and off to the left. So we're going to do the same thing in Photoshop with this blur and set it towards us and off to the left just a little bit, sort of like that. Hit OK. Voila, a beautiful, beautiful light ray. Now, what else we could do is just sharpen it a little bit. So we can go down to Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, Take our radius way up, just play around with the amount. And you can use preview to see it's sharpening it just a little bit. That should be fine. I don't know. I'm, I'm no expert here. You can play around. If you find you don't like the results, just go in and make a different brush next time. So something around there we're going to stick with. OK. From here, it's really as simple as just going up into Edit and Define Brush Preset. So we're going to save this as our bottom left center light rays. OK. Now you can open up your image inside of Photoshop. So we'll delete that. Go over to Photoshop, ah, <laughs> over to Lightroom. Head to Photo, Edit in Photoshop. Lightroom is going to think for a second. It's going to send that photo into Photoshop. And what's kind of nice is we can go back and forth if we ever need to and make some changes. So now to get to this brush that you've just created, you are going to want to select this little folder here. Go to Brushes. And in theory, it should be just down here on the bottom. You probably won't have these folders. It'll just say whatever the name of your brush was. So you select that. And now you can see there's the one brush that I've made. Here's another one that I made prior to this tutorial. So you can see they're slightly different. See which one you like better, or you can stack them, right? So I could use that one and then use this one and get a nice staggered effect rather than just having the exact same brush over and over. So you can go in, make a couple of these, and then play around. It's really as simple as just going in, seeing what works. So we're going to try and think about, first we're going to think about, did I accidentally brush on this? Yes, I did. <laughs> we're going to make a new layer right away by hitting this little plus icon, and then we're going to think about where the light would actually be. 
What's kind of cool about this brush, if it's not the exact right angle, you've got this little angle tool and you can change the angle of the brush. So just go ahead and adjust it based on where the light should be coming from. So for our example, probably pretty close to zero. That looks good. And then remember, light is kind of doing this as it expands. So we are going to want to adjust the angle as we go over to the left here. We'll just increase the angle of the light. So let's try something like that. It's probably too far. And just think about where the light would hit. So the light would hit the table, the light rays would stop, and then they would start again underneath the table. They come, kind of come off across. Now you can adjust your opacity on this and play around just to find what looks right. So you can start with a lower opacity and then do multiple layers, kind of stack them on top of each other. And then you can adjust the size of the brush either by literally going over here to your size, or you can adjust the size of the brush with the keys to the left and right of your P key on your keyboard. That makes it bigger or smaller. So I am no expert whatsoever, but I have found that just taking your time, you can get a decent result. You just need to really be strategic about like the way the light is hitting. And trying to line it up. So I'm going to make a new layer because I got kind of lost there. I'm going to reset our angle. And then just paint on down. See how that looks. I'm not digging it. Not digging it at all. I might actually try the other brush. That feels a lot more natural to me. It's definitely not as harsh. I don't know. Hard to say. The angle is still off, though. I want to make sure that I'm angling out a little bit more. Something like that is better. And then as I go in towards the center, I'll ease up. Mm, not quite enough. And on this side, I'll even increase that angle a little bit more. Okay, so that obviously does not look good or realistic at this point, but we're just worrying about getting the light sort of in the right place. Then we can take our opacity and dial it back. We can also play with the lighting mode. So we could go with maybe hard light. If you want to double click the layer, we can then add a little bit of color to it. So we can select a color that we like the looks of. So like a kind of orangish green because that's what color the light would have been in reality. Not obviously this strong, but what's happening is the sun, it's rising, it's hitting all the trees, and those trees are reflecting light into the window. So the window light is not going to be perfectly white. So we can add a little bit of a tint to it as well. Somewhere around there. And then we can go in with our eraser by hitting the E key on our keyboard. Make that eraser bigger. Turn our opacity down. And just go in here and erase the spots that it looks a little too strong, a little unrealistic. So like underneath this chair probably is not going to be a realistic place for light to be showing up like that. So we'll take our opacity up. Take your flow way down if you want to be able to just slowly paint it in. And I'm going to turn my opacity on this layer up so I can really get accurate with what I'm doing. So I'm going to erase off the table. Off my arm a little bit, my leg. And then these rays here off to the side, like those are just too strong. Maybe there could have been a little bit of a light ray over here, but nothing near that strong. So we're going to erase, erase that. All right. From there, maybe probably in the size of this window, that's looking a little unrealistic. A little bit too strong here. Good. So this is just pass one. So we're adding a little bit of light ray, but we're not trying to do it all with one layer. It's just like when you're editing in Lightroom, you don't want to try and do it all with one effect. We're going to do the same thing with these light rays. So here's before and here's after. It's definitely significant. It's definitely making a difference, but we're not done. So our second pass, we're going to make another layer here. 
And of course you could do something similar. You could literally grab another brush, do the same thing. And for some reason it won't show up probably because our opacity is too low and our flow is too low. Beats me, it's not showing up. <laughs> you could do another layer or, or we're going to do something else from a different little technique. We're going to go up here to where it says lasso and we're going to select polygonal lasso. Now grab the corners of the window where the light's coming in. Just grab the outline roughly. Okay, once you've got that, we're going to hit the B key on our keyboard. Navigate back to just a normal brush. So in theory, in theory, our normal brushes should just be available to us up here. General brushes. Let's go with soft round. Okay. I'm just going to brush in some nice light, just like that. Once you've brushed that in, and of course you can adjust that just by selecting whatever color you want. I've made it white for now. We're going to get rid of the selection we've made by hitting M on our keyboard again and just clicking outside of that selection. Okay. Then hit Command T on your keyboard. And then you're going to get these nice little dots that allow you to move this around. But that's not what we want. We actually want to right click it, select Distort, and then grab these guys and follow the light rays approximately where they would have gone. So something like that. Okay. So now we've made a really nice white box. It's perfect, isn't it? Lastly, we're gonna go up to Filter, Blur, and then you can play around with these different ones, but the one that was recommended to me was doo -doo 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 -doo, Box Blur. So that's what I'm using. I'm gonna grab my radius and just take it like way crazy high, like that-ish. And you can see that something about this angle probably isn't right. So I am gonna go back into my Transform by hitting Command-T, go Distort, and again, we're going to just grab that corner, spread it out like this. And from here, again, we can just take our opacity down, set the blend mode to overlay or soft light, something like that. And then you can adjust the color and the opacity just to add a little something, something. So if you want to, you can add some color. If you find it looks better without, go for it. World's your oyster. I'm actually maybe going to set it to something else. We'll see. It's just feeling too strong to me. So I'm going to hit Command-T on my keyboard, make it smaller. And then we're going to do the same exact thing. Command-T, I'm finding the right spot. Just moving it around. Hit Enter when you're done with that to get rid of that. Okay, so here's without it, here's with it. Obviously it's getting rid of a ton of contrast and I don't really love that. And it's adding a little bit too much magenta. So I'll make that closer towards green. But all we have to do is hit the E key to pull up our eraser in theory, if it'll let us. Make sure our brush is set to just a normal eraser brush. General. Soft round, okay. Now in theory, I can just erase that overlay in the exactly the same way. So I'm gonna turn my opacity down a little bit, my flow down a little bit, then I'm just gonna go nuts. It's not really a one-click Photoshop preset sort of a situation here. It's just selectively saying, okay, where do we wanna get rid of this? Where do we wanna add? what's good, what's adding, and what's taking away from this image and composition. Okay, then when you are done, dial the opacity back a little bit. So here's before and here's after. Whether or not you like this extra brush, that's up to you. I might get a little bit more out of here with my eraser. but it's just helping blend things a little bit more. And if you want to make those light rays a little bit more distinct, we can hit this layer, go up to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, and just set our radius somewhere we like. 
basically where it starts to show up and then take the amount and just sort of dial it back and forth, see what feels right. It's probably there. Here's before. Here's after. Pretty darn subtle. I'm not noticing much of a change, so I might even leave it. So that's our image. Here's before. And here is after. Hopefully that was a helpful kind of trick for you if you ever want to add some light rays in your photos in the future. And that's sort of how you do it. I obviously can do a better job. I'm not the master of this, but if I can figure it out, at least I know that it's simple enough that literally anybody could do it. So that's what I bring to the table. I don't bring the best tutorials. I bring the anybody can do it because if I can pull it off, you definitely can. Same thing applies to Photoshop, by the way. If you want perfectly straight erasing lines, you just click once and then hold shift, click your other area and Photoshop will erase in a perfectly straight line. So that's just a nice way to add some contrast, get your lines perfectly straight. And you can keep tweaking to your heart's content. I am going to erase off this chair a little bit more. And you could play around with erasing off of the shadows just to make the shadows slightly, slightly stronger. Okay. Before, after, that's it. So if this video was helpful, can you do me a big favor? Can you hit the like button? Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment below. What was the one piece that you're going to take into your next video? I would love to hear about it. And if you have any other tips, techniques, or suggestions for how to create these kind of effects, especially if you can do it in Lightroom without needing to head into Photoshop, I'd love to hear them. So leave them below. Otherwise, create something awesome. Tag me at Signature Edits Co. so I can see your version of this image. And I will see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.